Hey guys, I'm Nick May from The Business Brush. Today, we're gonna to be talking about branding. Stay tuned. So a lot of small businesses don't necessarily understand what branding is all about, but I bet you do. I know that you are probably familiar with companies like Nike or Adidas or Starbucks or maybe even McDonald's. They have all done a great job of branding and I'm gonna talk a little bit today about how it can help you in your business. The basics of branding that most small businesses like you and I would use in your business would be the logo and the colors that you use, the consistency of those colors that you'll use throughout all your advertising, your marketing, your website, any kind of brochures, or even your business card. But you might be asking yourself, why should I be doing branding? I'm just a small guy. Well, the reality is branding can do a really good job of helping to elevate the value proposition of your business in your customer's eyes. And that's what this is all about. I remember when I was a young contractor, maybe when I was 25, 26, and I was only in the business for a couple of years, I actually had customers ask me when I was out doing estimates at their house whether I was a part of a franchise. I would always kind of laugh and say, no, it's just me. But it really made me feel good because I always wanted the customer to believe or to think that my business was bigger than just me. When they have that view of you and your business, then they're going to attach a higher value to working with you. That means you have the ability to charge more than your competitors. So let's talk about the basics. How do you do a good job of branding your company? The first step is having a good name and you have to go through a process of what represents you, how do you want your customers to think of you. When I first named my business Walls by Design, I wanted my customers to think of it as a brand. I didn't want it to be Nick's Painting. Not that there's anything wrong with that, because I do have friends that are very successful with their name, but I wanted to be a little bit removed from my business. I knew that I wanted to build a business that was bigger than just me. I didn't want to be a part of every painting project moving forward. And today, I'm not. I don't estimate most of our projects. I'm definitely not the project manager and definitely not the painter on our projects. So once you have a good name, then you have to come up with a logo. And that might be the most challenging part is to come up with a logo that represents you and what you want your business to be about. Now, a couple of things I want you to think through when you're thinking through a logo. Some really great logos are very simple. They're just the words and you have to think through the font and the color that's going to be associated with that logo. Or maybe you want to have some kind of image or picture associated with your logo. Having a image is tough, but it can be very effective if you do it right. Now if I bring up Starbucks, we all have probably seen the Starbucks logo and the image that they have, but it's not quite as readily to mind of what it actually is. If we see it, we know it, but if you think of the Nike swoosh, you can think about it exactly as it is on every pair of shoes. My suggestion would be to go simple and stick with words and colors to represent you. Now the next thing you have to think through after the logo is colors. When I came up with my logo for Walls by Design originally, it was different than it is today. So today my logo for Walls by Design is a square with some script or just text in the middle of it and we use simply three colors, black, white, and gray. When I first came up with the original logo for Walls by Design, I used black, white, and gold. And the reason why I wanted black and gold was because I had a connotation in my mind that those colors were more high-end. And so that's why I went down that road. Now, three or four years ago, we decided to rebrand the logo and make it simpler and really bring it up to what we are seeing now in today's trends with logos. And so that's where we came up with the square with very simple lettering. The other things you want to consider when you're considering a logo is how will this look on a shirt? Can you embroider it very easily? Some logos are very difficult and very intricate and they won't really come out very well. The other places that we typically see our logo is on our business card, on signage at the job site, so if you have lawn signs, as well as on vehicles. If it's too busy, it's too hard to see. It's too hard for people to read. People should be able to look at your logo and within a second know exactly what you do. 
The biggest thing that you can do with branding and marketing of your business through your logo is making sure that you are consistent throughout everything that you put out. So making sure that everything that you produce, whether it's in print or in digital form, is consistent color-wise and you're using the same fonts consistently throughout everything. So on your website, on Facebook, on Instagram, on any direct mail campaigns, on your business card, all of those things, everything says the same thing and looks very consistent. Just like if you went to a Starbucks. Every Starbucks is a little bit different on the inside, but all the colors and all the fonts and all the logos are the same. So at the end of the day, that is gonna put in your customer's mind that you are worth more because it'll feel like you've been in business longer and that you're more professional. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. If you like this video about branding, why don't you check out this video about finding your dot perfect customer. We'll see you over there.